Why do so many Russians who live in the West still support Vladimir Putin? For me, as a Russian who left Russia in the year 2022 after the start of the war in Ukraine, because I was essentially afraid of the repressions and the crackdown on the freedom of speech that was about to come, Russian immigrants who live in the free democratic countries such as America or Canada and the countries of the European Union who still support Vladimir Putin and most of all, support his so-called special military operation, might be the most insufferable people imaginable. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really make sense. If you really love Vladimir Putin and the war that he's waging against the Nazi LGBT woke West or whatever, then why are you living in a NATO country? The usual time when all the Putin supporters in the West come out of the woodworks is during the election in Russia. For example, in the election of 2018, in many Western capitals, Vladimir Putin got over 80% of the votes. Well, this year, at the 2024 Russian presidential election, things turned out quite differently because, instead of boycotting the election, Russians who live in the West and who do not support Vladimir Putin actually went out to vote against him. The election in Russia is fo mostly falsified. That's why we are staying here to show how many people are against Putin. Huge lines, sometimes going for kilometers on ends, actually formed outside of the Russian embassies, filled with Russians shouting anti Putin and anti war slogans. And well, the Western living Z patriots also came out of the election, which created some of the most amazing human interactions between Russians that I've ever seen in my life. So, hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, and in today's video, guys, I would like to talk about the Russians who are living in the West and enjoying all the freedoms of essentially living in a democracy, which is a privilege that most Russians don't have, but still are Z, support Vladimir Putin, and, you know, the entire fight of the Vladimir Putin against the collective West, despite living in the collective West. I'd like to talk about why this happens, if really all Russians living in the West actually support Putin. Spoiler alert, they don't. And also show you some amazing clips of anti-war Russians arguing with the Russians on the streets of Europe. Because unfortunately, this is not a conversation that is possible in modern Russia. So, first of all, I'm gonna give you guys some context. You probably already know that Vladimir Putin has recently won yet another Russian election with 87% of the votes, of course in a very honest and totally not rigged election. The Russian opposition, actually sort of led by Yulia Navalny, the widow of Alexei Navalny, the famous now deceased Russian opposition leader and Putin critic, came up with the idea of an event called Noon Against Putin. The idea of it basically was for the people of Russia who do not support Putin to gather at their local Poland area on the noon of March 17th, the last day of the election, and essentially vote against Vladimir Putin, to show to the world that Russians who do not support Putin also exist, and to also show to each other that we actually exist, and that a lot of us. So obviously a lot of people in Russia came out to the polls right at this exact time as part of this sort of event, but also a ton of Russians abroad have been also queuing up and standing in huge lines in order to vote against Vladimir Putin. You could hear people chanting no to war and other anti-Putin slogans, and in a lot of countries, especially those countries where a lot of Russians went after the start of the war in Ukraine, the lines were absolutely insane. For example, in Belgrade, Serbia, the line spread across a few kilometers and people stood in the line all day, and not all the people that actually wanted to vote got a chance to votes. Same exact thing happened in Yerevan, Armenia. Actually, a lot of people who live in Georgia, Russians who live in Georgia, went to Armenia to vote. Because in Georgia, you can't really do it. I talked about this in my last video. Because I was literally in Georgia myself at the time of the election. So yes, the amount of anti-war, anti-Putin Russians who went out to vote was insane. However, guys, of course, since we're talking about Z patriots in the West, of course, a lot of these people went out to vote as well. So before I talk about the psychology of a Russian who supports Vladimir Putin but lives in the West, I want to show you guys a couple of examples of these patients in the wilds. First of all, we have this video right here from a line to the Russian embassy in Barcelona, Spain. <laughs> Look, I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> First of all, it's kind of cool to see this because you gotta understand in Russia, right, currently, the police and the governments, the judicial system is on the side of the Z patriots, obviously. So people don't get to scream no to war outside in the public, right? And people who scream Z shit essentially don't get any pushback. Because if you do push back, you go to jail. 
And here we actually have Russians who are anti-war who can say no war to the Z person's face. And I think that's kind of beautiful. But also I do find it hilarious that uh, <laughs> essentially when you find yourself in a situation, right? When you have a bunch of young bright people looking at you and screaming no war, no to war. And you're getting mad and you're getting defensive. Your first instinct essentially is to scream out war. You know, I don't really think you gotta rethink your life decisions at that point. Because if you're in a position where... Uh, <laughs> You're fighting against people who promote pacifism, and you're screaming at these people saying that we need to kill more Ukrainians, essentially. Once again, I do think this is a point where you need to rethink your life choices, because this is just not a position that I could imagine myself ending up personally. Could that be me, personally? What is your response to people screaming no to war to scream Donbass, Donbass, Donbass? I mean, that was a rhetorical question. I know why she's screaming that, because she's gonna go on about the eight years of endless shelling of Russians by Ukrainians, of course, in the Donbass. That's what all these, you know, Z people talk about. They only have one talking point. Fuck me, man. This is embarrassing. If this was like, if I saw this video online and this was like my mom, I would be dying on the fucking inside. Jesus Christ. And I know this woman's children live in Spain. <laughs> And you probably don't feel the same about this, so yes, they are dying on the inside right now. Good. Again, like, people in the line to vote against Vladimir Putin, they're chanting Russia will be free. They want freedom for Russia, they want democracy. Your response to that is to scream that Zelensky is a fascist. Okay, I guess, like... <laughs> Correlation? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is essentially what happens to your average Z brain that actually gets a response to their bullshit. These people are usually not used to hearing opposing opinions. Because even outside of Russia, these people essentially exist in a sort of a bubble where they literally only talk to other Russian immigrants who probably left Russia or the Soviet Union around the same time. And they essentially just live in a huge Z echo chamber. And guess what? Yes, the youth of Russia thinks that you are fascist. This might be really sad for you, but that is the truth. The generation that are essentially your children wouldn't really fuck with your ideology like that. And I'm sure it's really, really sad. Here's another video right here, actually shot in The Hague, the Netherlands. Yes, this is not a joke. <laughs> you guys cannot be fucking serious. Like, what is this, bro? <laughs> You know, guys, this is not exactly what I usually think of when I hear of the, uh... <laughs> when I hear the phrase, Putin supporters in the Hague. You know what I'm saying? This is not exactly what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking of a different mental image when I'm thinking of Putin supporters in the Hague. But, uh, yes, these are also, uh, Putin supporters in the Hague. Uh... <laughs> Interesting, guys. Just really interesting. This is the kind of, you know, fucking Russians you have living in the Netherlands. Well, you have young people screaming at them, you know, Russia without Putin. They're essentially, you know, <laughs> I don't know, they're acting as if this is some, like, uh, не знаю, это не Гага, это, блядь, день города, блядь, в Зажопинске каком-то, да, хуй. Приехал, блядь, выступить, блядь, <laughs> Газманов, Митя Фомин, блядь, и <laughs> я не знаю просто, что это, блядь, что это. So yes, guys, this is the Netherlands, The Hague. I've got some more videos from The Hague, actually. This one right here actually went viral, where a woman who came to vote for Vladimir Putin says that the last time she's been to Russia was in 1998, before Putin was even president. Пару слов буквально сказать о своей политической позиции, о том, как вы видите это все, почему сегодня вы пришли голосовать за Владимира Путина. Потому что я за за нашу Россию, потому что у нас я верю в то, что он он тот, который выведет нашу страну из этой ситуации, куда мы в международной э, политике сейчас оказались. А вы давно были в России? В 2008 году. То есть последний раз вы были в России в 2008 году? Ой, извините, обманула. 1998. В 1998 году. А вот я родился в 1999 году, и я вам скажу, что ваша позиция ужасна, к сожалению. Isn't this like just the perfect portrait right right here of the type of people that I'm talking about the Russians who enjoy the freedoms and all the benefits of living in a first world western country a free democratic country right we people of all genders sexualities political views whatever have equal rights and these people are so out of touch with the reality of Russia that they haven't even been to Russia in like 30 fucking years. 
and they still go into both of Vladimir Putin because Vladimir Putin in their minds is like a glorious savior of Russia or whatever who's like fighting against the collective West and we gotta support him even though we haven't been to Russia in 30 fucking years and we know absolutely nothing about life in Russia for the regular people but we will still go out there to vote for Vladimir Putin because he's the only person that will be able to get Russia out of this situation that he himself put Russia in yes genius I love it. The last time she was in Russia was before Putin ever became president. She's never spent a single day under Putin's regime. She has no idea what it's like and what people have to go through. And of course, she will be voting for Vladimir Putin. Maybe, in fact, the reason why she is is because she has not lived a single day under Vladimir Putin. Here's another video, once again, from The Hague in the Netherlands. Здрасте. А вы за кого сегодня голосуете? Я буду голосовать за свою страну. За какого кандидата? А как вы думаете, за кого нужно голосовать? Я лично думаю, что голосовать нужно за Николая Харитонова. А вы? За Путина. Again, guys, once again, another case of a Putin voter who uh, essentially has a ritual every six years to go out to the election day with a huge flag of Russia and scream about, you know, your patriotism and going out to vote for Putin, especially, of course, during the war in Ukraine. Yes, it's a great look, but... Once again, there's a very telling thing in this video where this person essentially says that I'm voting for our country, Russia. Because in the minds of these people, Vladimir Putin equals Russia. Which is obviously not the case. Guys, I mean, it's actually crazy to me that Vladimir Putin has so many supporters in The Hague. I think you should visit his supporters or something and do like a little meetup. Would be pretty cool. I think it's a cool idea, guys. <laughs> Come the fuck on. Если Путин решит, что Эстония нуждается в защите, это будет правильно? Вы поддержите? Если в Эстонии нас будут бомбить наши власти, убивать, ну, скажем, такую ситуацию. Вот в Нарве решат, что вот они хотят как бы автономию. Наши эстонские власти начнут бомбить мирное население, убивать. И тогда вы будете готовы поддержать Путина? Да. So yes, guys, this right here is a video from Tallinn, Estonia, another voter of Vladimir Putin here, guys. Yes, she lives in Estonia, and she's saying that if Vladimir Putin was to decide to uh, rescue the Russian inhabitants of Estonia from, you know, the Nazi Estonian government or whatever, she would fully support it. So, uh, yes, guys. Hey there in Estonia, you have people like this living in your country. I mean, it's kind of funny, isn't it? I mean, here's the thing, guys. Even if I was living in Estonia and I was Z, I wouldn't be out there on camera saying all these things because, you know, given how pretty ruthless Kaya Kallas is regarding Russians in Estonia and, you know, the things she says about Russians all the time, you know, I just wouldn't say stuff like this in Estonia, you know, if, if I was a Russian in Estonia, just my personal take, but, uh, <laughs> you do you guys, you know, vote for Putin and make sure to make your opinions hurt, because that way you guys are easier to identify. And once again, if you're feeling so downtrodden and, you know, bullied as a Russian in Estonia to the point that you want Vladimir Putin and his army to come rescue you, why don't you just go to Russia? Well, it's obvious, because love in Russia and Putin is very easy when you don't live in Russia. So, we looked at a couple of clinical cases of uh, Russians supporting Putin in the West. And as a Russian, you know, this is a phenomenon that I was always aware of. Even back in the early 10s, there were videos going viral on Russian internet of Russians being interviewed in New York, being asked essentially who they're gonna vote for, and a lot of these people say that they're gonna vote for Vladimir Putin because he made our country great and we're once again proud of our country or whatever. And even back in the day, these videos would get ironic comments underneath them basically saying, oh yeah guys, if you're so patriotic and if you love Putin so much, why don't you come here down to Russia to actually live with us and see what it's like. And yes, this has been a thing for the longest time now. Of course, there are quite a bunch of Russians who live in the West, but support the Russian government and Vladimir Putin. And the main question I and a lot of you guys probably have is why does this happen and how does this make any sense? The simple answer is, of course, Russian propaganda. However, I want to kind of delve into this a little bit more as an immigrant myself and as a Russian who's left Russia two years ago. I have a couple of points why I think this happens. And first of all, in my opinion, a lot of this has to do with just the process and the feeling of being an immigrant in another country. And the fact is, is that a lot of people who immigrate never fully ends up sort of integrating and kind of adapting and fitting in into the society. You know, there's a lot of people who don't even get to learn the local language. And I'm obviously not just talking 
talking about Russians. I'm talking about any kind of person who's moving to America, for example, right? I'm pretty sure you know those people in America who are, you know, elderly people who still don't really know English. A lot of immigrants end up in this sort of situation, especially if they're immigrants who sort of had to run from bad circumstances and never fully ended up integrated in society in one way or the other. A lot of these people essentially don't really end up learning the local culture, kind of, or adapting to it. They never end up making any friends that are locals. And essentially what happens is that a lot of these Russian immigrants, especially if they're older than 40, let's say, they essentially end up in a social circle full of other Russian immigrants. So they mostly talk with only other Russian-speaking immigrants, right? And since a lot of these people are having some trouble with their immigration, possibly because being an immigrant overall is not the greatest situation a person can be in. It's not terrible, but at the end of the day, there are things that you cannot do compared to the citizen of the country that you're moving to, right? And I'm sure that any immigrant before becoming naturalized is going through a process of a lot of anxiety of, you know, losing your residency or being sort of deported, possibly something like that, screwing up the immigration process somehow, right? And obviously immigration itself is a huge mental toll and everything. Many people end up in a situation where they essentially kind of hate their new country. And this is actually sort of a stage that every immigrant goes through, but it seems like for some people, the stage of sort of hating the country that you ended up in almost kind of never ends. So all you end up doing is essentially complaining about the country that you live in and thinking about how great Russia was or slash is. And this obviously comes with a certain feeling of nostalgia. Because when you're in a foreign society, surrounded by things you don't understand, you just want to go home. And for a lot of Russians, especially if they follow Russian propaganda and Russian state news, essentially, their feeling of nostalgia and sort of, you know, being a part of Russia turns into this super patriotic support from abroad. So essentially, this is how you end up having these people who live in NATO countries of the West that have, you know, legalized gay marriage, for example, right? And yet these people are supporting Vladimir Putin because he's fighting against NATO, the West, and, like, the gays essentially, right? And guys, you gotta understand, I'm not knocking people for being nostalgic about their home country. Guess what? I'm nostalgic about my home country too. And throughout my last two years of immigration, first living in Georgia and now here in Portugal, I've gone through all the stages of an immigrant, from, you know, being happy to being super sad, you know, I've had it all essentially, right? However, never throughout my entire process, I let, you know, my feelings or my anxiety sort of override my mind and sort of make me like a Z patriot who lives outside of Russia. And once again, I don't think nostalgia and patriotism to your country that even if you left it, right? I don't think it's bad, because honestly, guys, I consider myself a patriot of Russia, believe it or not, right? It's just that the Russian government has a different definition for what constitutes a Russian patriot. And I really don't want to conform to that, so patriotism and, you know, sort of keeping your national traditions and loving the culture of the country that you came from is completely normal. It's just the thing that patriotism doesn't mean that you have to, you know, support, say, invasion of another country, right? Last time that I checked, that's not what patriotism means. And once again, if an immigrant has not really fully realized himself in a new country, hasn't really built a successful career, so to say, or hasn't really fully integrated into society, that obviously comes with a certain feeling of your self-esteem and your self-worth and your self-image being hurt, right? You kind of feel like a failure, so I actually might imagine that for some Russians who end up, you know, as these super vocal Putin supporters in the West, they're essentially getting that feeling of self-worth from sort of imagining themselves as a part of Russia, right? As a part of the Russian collective that is fighting against the terrible collective West. And obviously, my life here in the West didn't really work out, right? And now, Russia is actually finally doing something. And I, as a Russian, of course, once again, guys, I have to support it. And this is exactly why people are screaming around right now that, you know, they're proud of being Russian and that they're not ashamed. Because, well, they essentially don't have anything else to be proud of. For the record, guys, I'm not exactly proud or ashamed of the fact that I'm Russian. I just kind of don't care. I am who I am. But I'm pretty sure that a lot of these Z Russians in the West even feel like they're kind of doing something, because obviously, they're living in the West, they're surrounded by all this degeneracy. However, they are Russian, and they still support Vladimir Putin, and they're sort of the Trojan horse in Europe. They're surrounded by enemies, however. We're Russian, and we're here to, you know, make you motherfuckers know how to fucking live, okay? So these people essentially think they're the main character. These people think that everybody around them, all these Europeans, want to kill them because they're Russian, because that's what they hear on fucking TV. And yes, they basically think that they're being fucking heroes or something, or like epic spies or some shit by basically going out there and uh, waving a Russian flag in the middle of the Hague, Netherlands. And in that moment, the Z person feels like they are the main character of their life right now. Yes, I'm in the middle of Nazi Europe, everybody's looking at me, but I'm standing proudly as a Russian 
citizen and I'm not ashamed. Ruski do da kansa, simu miru na zlo, all that shit, you know. I feel like that's a lot of the psychology of these Z people in the West and uh, get a job. That's really all I have to say. Get a job, guys, please. And another reason I think why this happens a lot also is I do think that a significant amount of Russians have a certain historical trauma that happened with the fall of the Soviet Union. A lot of Russians sort of felt like their country was kind of undermined, destroyed, so to say, right? They felt like, once again, their self-esteem kind of got hurt, right? Their greatness got hurt. So I imagine, actually, a lot of these people we're seeing, you know, who are Z in the West, most of these people probably left after the fall of the Soviet Union in the early years of the 90s, right? When Russia was a complete shithole. And obviously, these people will live in Russia with the feeling of, you know, just complete sadness for their country and what happened to it. And then these people essentially arrive to Europe, they keep consuming Russian state media, they keep consuming Russian propaganda, which of course is telling everybody about how great Russia is doing and how Russia is doing so much better than the West and everybody else. And essentially these people are just living in the West and watching all of this and they're like, damn, this Putin guy is actually like on his shit, right? He's really re bringing Russia back to greatness, right? So we gotta support him. Because essentially these people just believe myths about like Russia's greatness under Vladimir Putin and in their mind Putin is like the savior of Russia who's you know finally brought Russia back but obviously once again they don't know anything about life in Russia a lot of these people once again haven't been to Russia in 30 fucking years and they genuinely probably cannot even imagine what it's like living in Russia at this point they're just so completely out of touch with everything right so yes they go out there to vote for Vladimir Putin because Vladimir Putin brought Russia back from its knees and is now showing the West what's for by the way so yeah guys that's just what I think happens and once once again, for me as a Russian who's left Russia recently for very certain reasons, right? And for me as a person who has a lot of hate for the regime, these Russians who live in the West and who most of the time have had passports of these Western countries for years now, yes, I do find it quite insufferable when these people support Vladimir Putin when young people from Russia like myself and, you know, other people who are less fortunate, who, you know, don't earn a lot of money, essentially, these people are essentially either stuck in Russia because they can't leave and then essentially, you know, they're going insane because whatever, you know, everything that's happening in the country is insane or you have other russians who are having troubles with their visa and who just cannot get to you know live in these western democratic countries that these fucking z vatniks live in right and I just can't really look at this as like, you know, the ultimate irony and like the ultimate injustice. I mean, I didn't even know what. I just find it hilarious that these people have been voting for Putin for ages, living outside of Russia, and they have essentially contributed to our lives of Russian citizens who lived in Russia getting worse. And now when Russians who left Russia quite recently, who are anti-Putin and stuff, see these people out in public at the elections, these Z patriots have the gall to scream at them and tell them that they have no idea about what is going on. Sure, Jan. Sure. It's definitely you, the person who hasn't been to Russia in 30 fucking years. Yes, you are definitely the person who knows what is going on. But yeah, guys, once again, all I want to say in this video is, on behalf of all Russians, I want to say sorry for these people. They're absolutely insufferable. They suck, but they exist. And hopefully this video gave you some context why these people exist. And hopefully you guys are not going to be saying that every single Russian who lives in the West and who's escaped Russia is a Putin supporter. Because clearly, from what we can see in these videos that are coming out from the Russian election of 2024, clearly there's a lot of Russians who live in the West. Or should I say, the overwhelming majority of the Russians who live in the West definitely do not support Vladimir Putin. And we can see this, by the way, in the polling results as well. For example, in a lot of Western cities like Warsaw and Prague, the candidate Davankov got from like 50 to 60% of all the votes. And Putin also lost in the majority of European capitals. So, uh, good work Russians living outside of Russia. And, uh, please continue to film these amazing, you know, uh, <laughs> patients that we reviewed today. Uh, because, you know, they provide an amazing source of entertainment. And they are also a very interesting case to study. But yes guys, that being said though, this is gonna be pretty much it for today's video, I hope you guys did enjoy it, if you guys did then please make sure to slap the like button on this, and if you guys would like to support me additionally and that is financially, then go over to the link down in the description and become a YouTube member, it's basically like YouTube's own version of Patreon, it's a monthly donation, it's the best way to support me, or if you wanna do a one time donation, you can use super thanks underneath this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video once again, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.